Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the shop. We just finished up that adjustable tool rest a couple days ago and we're getting started on the next one. Uh, like I said, we do want to start getting into some more knife making. Uh, to date, I've made one knife that you can see here. Um, I did it with other people's grinders and a whole lot of help from a friend of mine. Uh, now we are going to test our grinding skills and work on a stock removal farrier rafts knife. Um, this is going to be a gift for my brother that is long overdue. Uh, it was supposed to be for his birthday last April, um, but hopefully we can get this done in relatively short order and you'll enjoy it as we go. So this design is far more advanced than my other design that I use, mostly that I'm utilizing a secondary bevel, a recurve blade, and a multifaceted handle. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give that a try. <laughs> I'm not entirely convinced I can pull any of that off, let alone all of it off. So the first step we do is tape it to our farrier rasp and hit it with some spray paint just to give ourselves an outline that's not going to go away. Uh, then we go ahead and take it over to the vise and cut it out with a four and a half inch angle grinder. Once the work shape is cut out with the cutoff wheel, we take it over to the grinding wheel and kind of clean that up a little bit. Um, after a couple of days of this, our belts do come in, which include uh, a couple of low grit ceramic shredder belts from Combat Abrasives, and that makes the final shaping and profiling much easier, as you'll see here in a second. I'd never used a ceramic belt before, and those those shredder belts from Combat Abrasives were fantastic. Um, I didn't even feel comfortable going down the 24 grit or the 60 grit grit that I bought, so I just sat on the 80 grit, and it worked great to get this thing uh, profiled and flattened out. We are hopefully going to be grinding in the bevels on our knife today. As you can see here. I have uh, marked the edge of this with Sharpie because I don't have any uh, marking fluid and gone ahead and scribed it um, to allow me to find the center line of it. I also did that for our secondary bevel on this side. Um, the way I did that, I know a lot of you probably don't have a ton of money for a big granite um, block. Uh, a cheaper way to do that that works fairly well is to go to a local... Um, either Home Depot store or a Habitat supply store and you can get a 12 by 12 of uh, a granite tile for like a buck fifty or something really small that works great um, for giving you a, a flat surface without the cost of a huge granite block. Um, so hopefully we're going to be doing that. This is only the second knife I have ever made. Um, and so I'm a little nervous about the uh, the compound recurve that we've got going on in this. And so I went ahead and made a pattern out of wood, um, which you can see here. 
and went and just practiced grinding that and keeping my bevels clean. Um, turns out it goes a lot faster making a knife out of wood than it does out of metal. Um, unfortunately, the edges don't hold up very well. But uh, the grinding went fairly well on that, so we're going to go ahead and set up uh, on the grinder and give it a shot today. All right, so where we're at right now is that our bevels are looking fairly good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I don't want to go any thinner than this uh, before I do heat treating on it. So I'm going to readjust the table. Um, the table was set at approximately 12 degrees, which gives us a total of 25 degrees for the flat grind on this. Um, so I'm going to change the table angle a little bit to do our, our secondary bevel up here. Um, so we'll go ahead and take care of that. All right, so I readjusted the table. So it reads uh, 72 degrees. What this means is that, 72 degrees in reference to the platen. What this means is that uh, the difference between 90 and 72 is 18, which means once we do both sides, we're gonna have a 36 degree grind on that secondary bevel on the knife. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. All right, everyone, uh, so we have rough grinding done. I've done all of this on an 80 grit belt from Combat Abrasives uh, that works great. So now that the rough grinds are done, we're gonna go back out into the shop and turn the forge on and start heat treat. All right, hey everyone. So far today, we have done three normalizing cycles. I'm not entirely sure they were necessary considering we didn't do any actual forging. All we did was stock removal on this blade, but I figured it couldn't hurt to do it, so we went ahead and did that. Uh, we now have the forge on and heating up. Um, we're going to toss a small piece of metal in there to warm up our oil a little bit. It's currently sitting at around 87 degrees. Uh, we want it closer to 100 and between 100 and 120. Um, and then we'll go ahead and quench. All right, so what we're looking for here is a critical temperature, which is about 1600 degrees. Um, and the way we're able to tell, since we don't have a heat treating oven, is um, we have a magnet um, in our vice jaws here. And it, when it becomes non-magnetic, that's when we are uh, gonna be ready to quench. So we're starting at the thickest part and waiting until that gets non-magnetic. And then we'll go ahead and work the entire blade up to up to non-magnetic temperature before we quench. We don't particularly care about the handle portion, so you won't see me getting that up to a cherry red. All right, so that section's not magnetic right now, so while keeping that one hot, we're gonna go ahead and heat up the rest of the blade since that was the thick thickest portion. Alright, so we're non-magnetic through the whole thing. We're just gonna make sure everything is kind of up to temp, let it soak for a minute, make sure everything's a nice even temp, and then we're gonna go straight in the quench tank. Now I'm quenching in canola oil because Parks 50 is very expensive. Uh, that's part of the reason why I've heated it up, just to kind of increase its viscosity a little bit. even even color go
nice and straight. Let's go hit the file and see what happens. All right, so she's getting a file. It's good, a nice hardened blade. So the next step is going to be our tempering cycles. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this um, with some sandpaper just to open up some metal so we can kind of see the color on it. And then we'll go ahead and do the tempering cycles inside in the kitchen oven. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the shop. Since the last video, we have completed our two two hour tempering cycles in the oven. Um, both of those were at 400 degrees and we used our kitchen oven to do it. Uh, word of warning, your kitchen oven might not be as precise as you would like it to be for your tempering cycles. I use a, another thermometer in the back of my oven uh, just to make sure I'm keeping track of the temperature at the hottest part of the oven. And I actually ended up needing to set my oven at 380 degrees, which kept the back of the oven uh, right around 400 for the entire two hour cycle. Um, and so when I placed the knife in the oven, I also placed it back by the thermometer so that I knew I was keeping track of the temperature where the knife was the whole time. Uh, one of the things you wanna make sure to do is get your oven up to temperature and check check the internal temperature before you even start your tempering cycle just to make sure that your oven is maintaining uh, a close, close to what you want for the tempering cycles. Um, I also make sure I'm checking it throughout the tempering cycle to make sure we're not getting any major fluctuations in the temperature. Uh, so when you're looking at, um, when you're looking for uh, tempering colors, what you're looking for is a nice straw color. If you start getting into a, uh, a purple or a blue, you have over tempered your blade and it will be too soft for most applications. Um, but a nice straw color is what you're aiming for, and you can kind of see that here. So for today, what we're going to be working on is cleaning up the knife, uh, getting off all the forge scale from the heat treatment process, and fixing some of the mistakes I made in the initial rough grind. Uh, we did all of that initial grinding with an 80 grit belt from Combat Abrasives. We're going to move up to a 120 grit belt, just so we're not being quite as aggressive with our, with our sanding or grinding. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and get started on that now. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the shop. As you can see, that mark on the blade that we just showed you is a burn mark where we let the blade get too hot while we were grinding uh, and ruin the temper on it. So we're gonna have to go back through the whole heat treating cycle again. Um, one of the other things that happened is we got a little um, aggressive with the belt we were on and I'm not really familiar with these belts and I kind of ruined the recurve portion of the blade. So we're changing the design a little bit and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Um, but since we re had to redo the heat treat anyways, we decided to go ahead and anneal the blade and go back through and drill some holes for uh, pin work in the handle uh, without it being hard. And we also want to go back and do a little bit of file work um, for the first time on, on this knife as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show you where we're at with the blade and then get started on the file work. All right, so here's where we're at with the knife now. As you can see, I drilled a couple holes here for pins. And then we're doing a brass rod back here for a lanyard hole. I also did uh, some divots along this side to help with uh, epoxy. The big thing that changed is in our design. We used to have a recurve here. And uh, mostly due to my inexperience with grinding, um, not to mention with my new uh, 2x72 grinder and the combat abrasive belts, I got a little over aggressive through here and kind of uh, ruined the metal I had that was... Um, set up for the recurve. So this is just kind of a straight edge now. Uh, we're still doing the secondary bevel up top um, and we cleaned uh, some of that up and now we're gonna go uh, back, and not go back, sorry. And now we're going to do the file work. So as you can see, um, I've gone ahead and put Sharpie on the area above where my handle will go. And I'm planning on doing a little decorative file work there that will also serve as kind of a thumb grip. Um, as, as you are getting your, you know, put some force down on the knife, it will help um, in that area as well. So we're gonna get set up in the vise and we'll get started. 
The S file work seemed simple and something I would be able to do with the files I had on hand. We go ahead and use a circular chainsaw file to mark off the curves and the S's. And then we go back with our triangular file to mark the lines that uh, delineate between each individual S as well as give it a beginning and end point. Um, I really like the way the S's flowed and I'm really happy with how this turned out and I will certainly be doing more spine work um, on my knives in the future. All right, so here's where we're at right now. Uh, we just came out of the tempering oven last night and we got good color around the edges. Uh, we do have holes drilled for, for the tube in the back as well as some divots to add a little more uh, surface area for the epoxy to hold on to and then two pins in the front at the same angle as the handle is going to be. So now we're gonna go ahead and clean it up on the flat plane, get all the forward scale off, and then we'll start grinding our bevels. All right, folks, here's where it stands after about an hour of grinding. Uh, the bevel on this side is looking pretty good. Uh, we've gotten our bevels up to a 220 grit. Bevels on this side are a little higher than the bevels on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and correct that as part of our uh, final final sanding. Uh, we'll probably take these up to 400 grit on the belts and then switch over to hand sanding to finish it off. Um, our next step is going to be scales and so we are going to be doing those scales out of a two-tone uh, plastic liner which will be black and white. Uh, black on one side, white on the other side, and then we're going to be using bamboo scales. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that. All right, so here are the scales we're going to be using. Uh, this, these two pieces of bamboo, I got uh, for another project that came as um, two by two. So I just cut them down into about three eighth inch strips. Uh, those plus our scales, which like I said, are white on one side and black on the other, will give us plenty of width for our, our uh, knife. So what we're doing today is an initial glue up where we're going to glue our liners to our, um, to our bamboo. And then uh, we're going to uh, do the next step, which will be drilling the holes, getting everything shaped. Um, but for this first step, this just means I only have... Uh, one piece of material to work with on either side as opposed to having two pieces. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. All right, so we went ahead and let that glue dry for overnight. Uh, it's the next day now, next afternoon, and we've got our scales um, glued up. So these pieces will be able to gl be glued directly to the knife. Our next step, since they're just rough, uh, rough squares, is to go ahead and uh, mock them up on the knife. And I did that on this one um, and kind of traced out where we're at, as you can see here. And so what we're going to do is just clamp uh, this scale to the knife, um, roughly where this is, just making sure all of our handle material, it, handle material on the knife is covered. And then we'll go ahead and start cutting things down. Um, our first, first cut is going to be this front angle. Um, this is where the handle is actually going to stop. But before we do any of that, we'll get the holes drilled in both of our scales and go get, um, get them lined up. And then we'll be working on the handle scales together. So we got our scales drilled 
um, and lined up and I just took them over to the grinder real quick and squared up my edges, make sure everything's nice and flush. Uh, and then from here, we will start to do our shaping. So um, from this picture, what you can see is I drew a line that was roughly the angle of where our holes were here. And then this line is actually where the end of the handle is going to be. And you can see the rough outline of the handle of the, the knife here. So our next step is I'm gonna go ahead and cut on that line. And then we'll make sure that everything is looking good on the knife. And then we'll start shaping, um, doing our rough shaping on the handle before we do our final glue up. That's most of our rough cuts done. Obviously you can see I've stayed well wide of the line. So we're gonna go ahead and put this um, on the knife and just see where we're at. Uh, the goal is to be um, fairly large from, where, from the knife itself. Um, the only thing that we are going to bring to the line before glue up is gonna be this um, front line. Everything else uh, we will take down to the knife after we do the final glue up. All right, so here's where we're at. Um, we did a little bit more shaping and we have the rough shape uh, with a little bit of margins on most of our areas of the handle. Uh, now what we're gonna do is with everything pinned like this, I wanna take a few minutes and kind of draw out um, the design that we wanna do on this handle. I have had a little bit of tear out um, from these holes that uh, concerns me a little bit, particularly back here, um, right here. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go in far enough in that area to get rid of that tear out. And if I don't, um, then I'm gonna have to start over on these handle scales. But we'll go ahead and attack that um, as we go. Uh, so yeah, the next step is draw out kind of what we wanna do as far as how we wanna grind this handle. Then we're gonna take it off the knife, um, pin these, uh, the two scales back together and shape them together before we do our final glue up.
Alright, so here's where we're at after that um, initial grinding. Uh, it came out pretty good, not perfect, but uh, this is the first time I have done anything other than just a, a standard Coke bottle shape. Um, so where we're at now is I want to do a little bit of hand sanding on the handle uh, before we do final glue up. The rest of the shaping on the handle will be after uh, we do the final glue up. Um, it's really just, it's it's almost impossible to get these uh, front bevels done with it on the blade. Um, so that's why we grind those first, but they're looking pretty good. Uh, they need a little bit more work around the finger um, finger hole here uh, just to even them up, but it feels, it's feeling good. Uh, and I'm, I'm getting tired of uh, these pins being in my way. So we're going to go ahead and um, do a little bit of hand sanding on it, do final glue up, and then we will uh, bring you back for, for all of that. All right, so here's where we're at today. Uh, we took the clamps off and I took it back out to the shop. Um, we're gonna go ahead and cut through the pins with our bandsaw and then we'll take you over to the grinder and start cleaning up, cleaning up the uh, epoxy and start doing some of our final shaping. Thank you. 
I wanted to show a couple more minutes of the grinding process for this handle than I usually do, mostly because I tried a number of different positions. Again, this is the first time I've done a faceted handle, and I wanted to show you the positions that didn't work as well as the ones that did. Um, most of the positions you see me using uh, in this section, um, as well as later on in the grinding process, are the ones that I had uh, figured out worked best to get the shapes I wanted on the handle. Um, the first ones are ones that I thought might work and uh, didn't work quite as well. I also made one mistake when I was working on the finger well, and that's that I caught the corner of the blade, and <clears throat> we ended up having to do a slight design change and round over that transition into the blade, which we didn't initially want to do. So as far as sharpening is concerned, we took it to a 220 grit finish on the belt and then we went over to sandpaper on my uh, granite tile and um, we're just putting a micro bevel on this at this point and we went ahead and with 400 grit and 600 grit on the granite tile, took it to the point that we had a wire on the blade and then we transitioned over to this uh, 1000 grit whetstone. Uh, this is the first knife I've uh, really sharpened. The last knife I made was done, again, using somebody else's grinder who had a uh, polishing belt and it was an entirely convex grind, so it was fairly easy to finish it to a, a fairly sharp um, end point on the belt. Um, feel free to critique my technique and give me any pointers. Again, I. I bought this stone a while ago for a specific use and never really got the hang of it. I'm trying to learn a little more now, but am happy to take some uh, pointers or guidance based off of uh, how I'm doing. All right, uh, welcome back. Uh, we just finished up sharpening this and it will cut through paper really well. 
uh, shaves my arm a bit as well. So we are going to uh, go ahead and dip this in our, or dip our handle anyways, in uh, boiled linseed oil. And that will be the finish on the handle. We'll give that a couple coats and then this will go on uh, back to Michigan for my brother. This build was a ton of fun and I learned a bunch both in general about knife making as well as specifically about my grinder and the new combat abrasive belts that I got. Uh, grinding this handle and the multiple facets was certainly a learning experience trying to find the right angles. I am hoping that the small wheel kit I'm getting for my birthday will help with that. Oh, and there's one other thing that I forgot to mention about those, uh, those two-tone liners. And that's that they are actually glow-in-the-dark, which you can see here. Uh, but hopefully uh, this project will be enjoyed by all of you all, and if you could like and subscribe below, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, like I said, this knife is actually going to my brother as a very, very late birthday present, so I hope he enjoys it and gets a lot of use out of this bushcraft knife I made up.